Hi, I'm Alistair Penn and you're watching Expressive Photography. Welcome to another episode of The Making of the Shot. Now, as you can see from the weather behind me, we've got another grey sky day here in the west of Scotland. We've been sitting here for about an hour or more waiting for squalls of rain to pass through and it's kind of got to the point where it's somewhat stopped, uh, stopped raining, but it's still very grey and very overcast. Now, the background is so dramatic, it's quite an iconic place here in Scotland, uh, this beautiful arch on the west coast here. And it's quite a famous, quite a famous iconic scene. And one of the things that always amazes me, and apologies for being so low in the frame, I'm having to hold the tripod to stop it from blowing over. Um, on a day like this, whenever I come to somewhere like this, with a client particularly as well, who's maybe here only once, is I, I like to try and find a really colourful foreground, something that just stands out. And as you can see, most of the rocks around here are very grey, it's a Luetian gneiss, a, a very ancient rock. Um, and what I've managed to find down there is a, a beautiful foreground of coloured yellow lichen, some quartz bands, and then another boulder that's somehow kind of angular. And it's creating this really engaging foreground. So let's just dive down there. I'll show you a bit more detail where it is. And then what we'll do is we'll show, go through some of the technicalities of the actual composition the taking of the shot, the trouble we're having with, with more little spots of rain, little spots of water on the lens, all that type of thing, how to overcome some of that, and then we'll get back into the studio, we'll process it, and see what we can come up with at the end of the day. Well, as usual here, it's absolutely blowing a howling gale. And what I've managed to do is find a, a shot that I've never taken before, which always pleases me. And as you can see in this, uh, in the video here, the, the foreground, uh, there's just that one big patch of the orange kind of lichen. And what it's doing is forming that perfect, colorful foreground. The rock that's on the right-hand side is creating some angles coming in from the right. There's a big patch of quartz on the left hand side. So there's three points of luminosity pointing directly towards the beautiful arch there in the background. So when you've been to a location, I a number of times, and in this case, I've been there dozens of times. Um, it's very easy to go back to the same place or look at the same kind of composition. And this one really struck me as something that I hadn't photographed before. And I wanna talk you through what it was that kind of attracted me to it. As you can see on a day like this, the sky is super flat, super gray. Uh, there was some quite energetic water, but it was a very overcast and quite a flat afternoon. We had been sitting through big rainstorms. Now, um, the main thing about this shot is that nice rock in the foreground with the, with the nice orangey lichen in the front of it. Also, this boulder on the right hand side here that as you can see points directly towards the arch and then there's this big quartz block which also has an angle to it which somehow points at the arch. So what we're doing is we're using foreground elements and the 12 mil is ideal for kind of forcing that kind of perspective so that everything is somewhat angled towards the arch there, which is ultimately the subject of the scene or the kind of high point of the scene uh, theoretically. Um, I'm a big uh, fan of foregrounds. I love foreground texture. I love foreground interest. And as I've discussed a number of times in many videos recently, taken on flat days, uh, I use colour in foregrounds to add joyfulness and energy to scenes uh, where the sky just isn't delivering any particular drama. So um, one of the biggest issues we had here was that the sea spray was blowing up, catching the wind and blowing straight into us. Now this is the first exposure I made and you can see that there are a few 
water droplets here and there. Um, however, by the time I made the second exposure, things were exponentially worse, even after wiping, um, but they were in a different place from each other. So I actually only made two exposures because the conditions got worse, the rain came in again. And where I got to with this was I thought, right, I've got two exposures of this. I like the water in the first exposure. Um, however, there are parts of the second exposure that don't have spots on them. So what I did was I took them into Photoshop, I combined them and I used the bits from the really spotty image to clean up some of the bits uh, in the image that didn't have so many spots, if that all makes sense. Basically, I combined two exposures to clean up dust spot, um, water droplets uh, onto the final raw file, as it were. Uh, I then continued in Photoshop uh, with the next frame here and removed quite a lot of distracting white elements. You can see here we've got patches of quartz on the edge, we've got little lichen spots, um, and I find anything like that to be a little bit distracting. It makes it feel a bit cluttered to me, uh, and it is my preference to tidy these things up. Whatever the morality and the ethics are of this, I don't really care, uh, but for me, tidying them up, and as you can see, if I just skip between those two frames, the one with the distractions, the one without the distractions, I just feel that this one somehow uh, just allows me to focus on the key elements of the frame. So I quickly worked this one and you'll see between here and the next frame that there really isn't a huge amount of work. This is the fin final worked file, I've kept it very natural, I've added a little bit of uh, atmosphere with a, with a nice sort of Orton-like glow just to give it a slightly ethereal uh, feel to it. Um, the colours are kept fairly natural and what I think works in this is the foreground is a beautiful element. I love that rich, vibrant orange of those lichens there. There's a glow to the quartz. Uh, we're seeing some three-dimensionality in this foreground. All the rocks are kind of folded over each other and everything seems to be pointing to this arch. And then we've got the somewhat grey sky kind of flops over the top, but with a little bit of the blue in there. Uh, just to retain that cool winter feel to it. And at the end of the day, I'm reasonably happy with this photograph, given how bad the conditions were, how challenging it was, and the fact that it's a new composition, I actually felt kind of happy with that whole thing. About three weeks later, I was running a second private workshop with another client, another member of the forum, the Expressive Photographers Forum. And on the first day that we were together, we went back to this location, and the conditions were uh, almost as bad, but not quite. Um, you can see here from this raw file that we are still looking at quite an overcast day, but the sun is just peeking through uh, in this particular moment. Uh, and there is a kind of a band of sort of dark clouds on the horizon there. Just so you know that I'm working in the Adobe Neutral profile, so this looks super flat. It's not; it's the flattest of possible RAW files, um, which does make it look um, really flat. Uh, so what we'll do is I will combine, I'll show you this and the previous one, the original composition, if we want to call it that, and we'll compare how they differ. If we look at the two images side by side, this is the original first exposure with the sensor spots, and this is the second one. Um, on the first occasion, I'd had real trouble with my tripod. The legs had actually seized, and I had real trouble getting it, perhaps as uh, positioned as I would have liked. In the second one, I was using a new Gitso tripod, uh, thanks to the people at Gitso for sending me a new one, um, and I was able to position it to where I really felt I wanted it to be. And you can see there's some very distinct differences between the original exposure and the second exposure here. First of all is we've lost this band of water in the middle of the frame there. I've allowed this cliff to overlap with the sea stack. The second thing is the point of this rock on the right hand side is uh, more 
prominent. It's a more distinct, uh, distinctive um, feature in the composition. It's more pointy and it seems to create quite a nice confluence of energy and angles and contrast in this sort of center part of the frame. You will notice, however, that this, the C stack itself feels smaller. And I think this is just because I'm tilted down slightly more. Um, the, I've got a little bit more foreground in here. And I think what's happened is, is that the distortion of a 12mm lens has just made that C stack recede somewhat more. So ironically, even using a 12mm lens from the same position, the C stack on the left looks more, or the arch looks more prominent than it does in this one. And this led me down some very different choices when it came to the processing. This is the final scene uh, taken on the second uh, time I went there. So this is the word file. And as you can see, I've added quite a lot more contrast to this one. Um, the rocks are that warm. There's a real redness in these rocks here. Uh, and I think the way that counteracts uh, or is a counterpart to the blueness, uh, the sort of shadows under those storm clouds that are coming towards us. Um, has allowed for a quite a strong warm to cool transition. By making it a square, uh, I've got rid of an awful lot of negative space on the top and the arch has somehow become more prominent in the frame again. Um, and I like this one actually. It's hard for me to decide which of the two I prefer, but let's have a look at them side by side and we can see where we are with that. So what should be become abundantly clear uh, from looking at these two images side by side is that, first of all, you can go back to the same place again, 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 and you'll make different photographs. Uh, the conditions are always different. The light is always different. When you're by the ocean, the, it's always changing the height of the tide, although these are very similar in terms of that. With a wide angled lens, particularly a 12 mil prime, the tiniest amount of movement between you know, where you move your tripod or where you move the camera in relation to the subject matter is going to change the distribution of the elements massively. Uh, and in the one on the right, you can see it feels very compact and very contained. Um, I kind of like them both. I, I wouldn't want to have to decide uh, between the two which one I prefer. Uh, they're different. They have a different expressive qualities to them. They both have a combination of warm and cool. The one on the right feels a little bit more welcoming, a little bit warmer, a little bit more inviting. The fact the sun is in the frame, I think, helps to give it that sort of slightly more energetic and welcoming feel. The negative space on the left-hand side here, all of this cool blue space, kind of yin-yangs a little bit with the rocks uh, and creates quite a nice sort of interaction of negative space and subject. Both of the shots are very, very different. I like them both, uh, which is a good thing as far as I'm concerned. But hopefully you've gathered some insight from this in well, sort of uh, discovery of my own um, exploration with this. It's a new composition to me. Um, it's somewhere I haven't, it's not a composition I've photographed before. So it's very interesting for me to go back to this iconic location that I've been to dozens and dozens of times and find something new to shoot, find a different way of presenting the content that's there and allowing the weather conditions to somehow dictate whether I want to add more negative space or less negative space. Join me in a few weeks time again when I'm trying to get out to this location uh, in hurricane force winds. Uh, I was out there just last week actually as I'm recording this and it was utterly mad. Uh, I was unable to photograph it basically but I did make some other photographs on my journey there. There was waves basically crashing over this thing and it's about 140 feet high. It was just the most insane experience so please stay with the channel and see that video in a few weeks time. Other than that, I hope you find my somewhat intuitive approach to landscape photography to be uh, appealing to you. In next week's video, I am actually going to be looking at the concept of shooting intuitively and how we can see the landscape with a feeling of intuition and how we can make photographs that are somehow spontaneous 
and expressive, but allow us to engage with the landscape in a very fluid and, and uh, non-stressful way. So please tune in next week for that video. As always, if you've enjoyed this content, please hit the old subscribe button down below. Give me a thumbs up. And of course, uh, I am always happy to read your comments. Uh, as always, please check out our learning material, Luminosity and Contrast, The Color of Meaning, Creativity Superpowers, plus our Dodge and Burn Masterclass and our Black and White Processing Series on video. All of these products, I'm absolutely certain, will help you to catapult your own creativity your own expression and your own enjoyment in the landscape uh, as it's done for me. And I can honestly say every time I'm in the field, I'm just having a blast with no pressure and no anxiety. I am truly a happy photographer. I'm extending the 25% discount for you into March uh, to celebrate the 25,000 subscribers that we now have on the channel. I'm so happy and so grateful for all of you who've subscribed um, and I look forward to the next 25,000 subscribers uh, in the next decade uh, or however long it takes to get there. Thank you once again for all your support and encouragement. Uh, but that's it for this week. I look forward to talking to you again soon. Be safe wherever you are um, and lots of love. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.